we're asked to find f of g of h of x and determine the domain. Looking at the composition of three functions, notice how the innermost function is h of x, where h of x is equal to the square root of the quantity x plus 3, which means f of g of h of x is equal to f of g of the square root of the quantity x plus 3. Notice how here we substituted the square root of the quantity x plus 3 for h of x. And now the square root of the quantity x plus 3 becomes the input into g of x, where g of x is equal to 1 divided by the quantity x squared minus 2, which means f of g of the square root of the quantity x plus 3 is equal to f of 1 divided by the square of the square root of the quantity x plus 3 minus 2. Let's go ahead and simplify this fraction. If we square the square root of the quantity x plus 3, we just get x plus 3, which gives us f of 1 divided by the quantity x plus 3, and then we still have minus 2, which gives us f of 1 divided by the quantity x plus 1. So notice how 1 divided by the quantity x plus 1 is g of h of x. And now finally to find f of 1 divided by the quantity x plus 1, we replace the x in f of x with 1 divided by the quantity x plus 1. This gives us the square of 1 divided by the quantity x plus 1 and then plus 5. So this may be one way the composition of functions is expressed, but let's also square the fraction. To square a fraction, we square the numerator and we square the denominator. So we can also express the composition of functions as f of g of h of x equals the square of 1 divided by the square of x plus 1 plus 5. Well, the square of 1 is 1, and if we square x plus 1, there are no shortcuts. We have two factors of x plus 1, giving us four products, 1, 2, 3, 4, which gives us x squared plus x plus x, which gives us plus 2x, and then plus 1, giving us 1 divided by the quantity x squared plus 2x plus 1, and of course we still have plus 5. So the composition of functions can also be expressed in this form. And that's work on determining the domain of the composition of three functions, which can be a little bit tricky, so we will follow the steps below. Step 1, we will find the domain restriction of the function rule h of x. Step two, we'll find the domain restriction of the function rule g of h of x. And then finally, step three, we'll find the domain restriction of the function rule f of g of h of x. From here, the domain of the composition of functions must contain all the restrictions from one through three. So let's begin by determining the domain restriction for h of x, where h of x is equal to the square root of the quantity x plus three. The radicand, or the number under the square root, must be non-negative, which means x plus 3 must be greater than or equal to 0. So if x plus 3 must be greater than or equal to 0, if we solve for x, we subtract 3 on both sides, which gives us x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Using interval notation, this would be, this would be the interval where the interval is closed on negative 3 to positive infinity. And now we need to find the domain restriction for the function rule g of h of x. Remember, g of h of x would be the composition of the two innermost functions, which we found as 1 divided by the quantity x plus 1. And since division by 0 is undefined, x plus 1 can't be 0. If we solve x plus 1 can't equal 0 for x, we get x can't equal negative 1. Using interval notation, this would be the open interval from negative infinity to negative 1 union, the open interval from negative 1 to infinity. And now let's consider the function rule for f of g of h of x. And let's go and use this form of the composition of functions here. 
Once again, we know division by zero is undefined, and therefore x plus one can't equal zero, meaning x can't equal negative one. So notice how this restriction is the same as the restriction for g of h of x. Using interval notation, this is the open interval from negative infinity to negative one union, the open interval from negative one to positive infinity. So now to determine the domain of the composition of functions, we need to consider all three of these restrictions, but notice how the restrictions for the last two function rules are the same. So let's focus on the restrictions for the first two function rules, which means we need to determine the intersection of the intervals expressed in interval notation. Working our way from left to right along the number line, let's begin by considering the intersection of these two intervals here. Notice the interval that satisfies both conditions would be the interval that's closed on negative three and open on negative one. Let's go ahead and record this. From here, the open interval from negative one to positive infinity is in the interval that's closed on negative three to positive infinity, and therefore we also include the open interval from negative one to infinity. This interval satisfies all the restrictions and therefore is the domain of the composition of functions f of g of h of x. Let's also express this using inequalities. We could also say that x is greater than or equal to negative three and less than negative one or x is greater than negative one. I hope you found this helpful.